Welcome to Wait to Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. Wikipedia defines welfare as the provision of a minimal level of well-being and social support for citizens without current means to support basic needs. Maybe that definition was accurate at one time, but not so much today. Not long ago, a think tank called the Cato Institute published a study called The Work Versus Welfare Trade-Off. It's an update to the original study done in 1995. A few things may have even changed since the update. Here's a telling quote. Welfare currently pays more than a minimum wage job in 35 states. Most reports of this nature only look at a single program, such as temporary assistance for needy families. But as Michael Tanner and Charles Hughes, the authors of the Cato study, point out, there are 72 federal programs which provide cash or equivalent benefits to individuals. And of course, states and municipalities also have welfare programs. Tanner and Hughes took all this into account when they did comparisons for what they consider to be the typical welfare family, a single mom and two children. The study says that in many states it is possible for people leaving welfare to take jobs paying slightly less, but because of earned income tax credit, the child tax credit, and similar provisions, their income does not actually drop. Now let's talk about the pay equivalent for welfare. According to the study, in 13 states, benefits total more than $15 an hour. And let's take it one step further. These next statistics come from Culture Cheat Sheet. Welfare pays close to $10 an hour above the current minimum wage in some New England states. In Hawaii, that's nearly $20 an hour more. Finally, two more shocking statistics from the Cato Institute report, and I'm quoting here. In 11 states, welfare pays more than the average pre-tax first-year wage for a teacher. In 39 states, it pays more than the starting wage for a secretary. And in the three most generous states, a person on welfare can take home more money than an entry-level computer programmer. I don't believe the answer is raising the minimum wage. More and more, we're seeing that that results in increasing automation and fewer entry-level jobs. Clearly, that minimal level of well-being and social support that Wikipedia describes is more than exceeded today. Now, I'm not complaining about helping those who are mentally and or physically handicapped. Let's leave them out of this discussion. But for everyone else, when it's more profitable to stay at home than go to work, people will tend to stay home, leaving the rest of us to pay their bills. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. 